The latest poll puts the Likud party, that is the party of Prime Minister Netanyahu, in the lead with 31 seats. Blue and white with 30 seats. The joint Arab list and Israel Beitenu both would have 11 seats. So what this means in a practical sense is this. Israel's left-wing parties are projected to hold 51 seats, with the right-wing and ultra-Orthodox parties holding 58. Now remember, you need 61 Knesset seats to control the government, putting Israel Beitenu again in the role of kingmaker. And remember, I24 News will be providing full election coverage on Election Day in Israel, September 17th, only 11 days from now. And our coverage will be running all day and all night. I24 News is your only home for Israeli election coverage. All right, for more on these elections, which, as we said, look a whole lot like the election results we saw back in April, we're joined by Thane Rosenbaum. He's a Middle East analyst and a distinguished fellow at NYU School of Law and Eric Mandel, director of the Middle East Political Information Network. It sounds like we're going to have the exact same conversation that we had leading up to the April election and during the, the April elections, Thane. I mean, again, pretty much the same scenario, perhaps slightly different kingmakers. Yes, you're right, Michelle. I remember when you anchored coverage before, we kept saying, wow, this is an extraordinary outcome, but President Trump is really the gift that Netanyahu received. In this case, with the most recent polling, it's not really surprising because the last poll didn't include Moshe Fagel and Sehut party. Right. And remember, that party uh, merged with Likud. So one of the reasons why in this polling Likud may have picked up a seat or two uh, is partly retributable to that. And I also think it's, it has something to do with the ongoing skirmishes in the north with Hezbollah. Because, you know, President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is a wartime right. prime minister, and the Israelis are always more interested in him when their national security is threatened. So Likud does have Fagelin. One of the big draws of Fagelin was that he wants to legalize marijuana. And apparently there's an agreement made with Likud that a lot of his policies will come to fruition. He'll have a seat on the government should Netanyahu be able to form that governing coalition. But again, Eric, what could make this result different? If, again, it seems like we have the same kingmaker, at least in the form of Avigdor Lieberman, according to the latest polls, what could make this go otherwise? So first of all, um, President Rivlin, uh, who's on the enemies list of uh, Bibi Netanyahu, is not going to let Bibi dissolve the government again. He's going to give Blue and White a chance, even if they get less seats. Secondly, the joint list... You think Rivlin is going to let Blue and White go first at forming a coalition government, even if they have less seats than they could? No, it's, but he's not going to let... If Bibi can't form a coalition... Right. Then he's not going to let BB pull another maneuver like he did the last time. He was very, I believe, very angry about that. And I think the Israeli uh, democracy um, was tested because of that. Uh, the other part here is the joint list, which is very unlikely to be able to join blue and white in a coalition. They could be um, recommended to form a government to President Rivlin to get back at Bibi, and that could change you the possibility. You think Rivlin would be that vindictive against Prime Minister Netanyahu? There's a long list. Naftali Bennett, uh, Shaked. I mean, there's so many people that, uh, that really are, are angry at Bibi over the years. Thane, is this election again about Bibi, yes or no? Because the previous election really seemed to focus on people that just wanted to get rid of Prime Minister Netanyahu. Is, is it the same dynamic or are there any different issues at play now? Well, it's interesting because, yes, there's truth to that. But here's the other truth. Over 40 percent of Israelis, when they're polled, if they ask them, who do you want as prime minister, they pick Netanyahu. So even despite all of the infighting among the Knesset members and the fight in the parties themselves, the people themselves, to almost to a majority, uh, by far, because the, 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 someone like Shaked right. only polls at 5 percent. Okay, Eric, we're sitting here, and just several hours ago, rockets firing from Gaza into Israel again. At least five rockets fired, thankfully, no, no damage or injury reported. But the people in Israel south are fed up. They've had enough of being under this constant attack, and they want to know who is going to be able to protect them better from a security perspective. Is there really a significant difference between what Prime Minister Netanyahu could do regarding that matter versus a potential Prime Minister Benny Gantz? I don't think there's any difference. And I think the Israelis know the only difference really between these parties from a security point of view is um, there, there really is no difference from a security point of view. The only difference is a religious secular point of view where Bibi has taken in the ultra-Orthodox and blue and white has pushed them away. So why replace Netanyahu then? If there's no difference, why not keep the leader 
that does have an established relationship with world leaders. He does, but he's under indictment, and Israel is a democracy. He more. is pending a hearing to see whether there will be indictment charges. Not quite yet <laughs> under indictment. It's complicated. No, no, no absolutely. But, but that will be uh, Mandelblit, the attorney general, will probably likely indict him during the coalition talks. And the truth is, it, it would be a threat a little bit to Israel's democracy if they either created a law or f somehow find a way to bypass that. So it's all about this indictment hearing, which Netanyahu says is a witch hunt. He I says that these charges are concocted, that they're fabricated to get him out of power. That would be what, what he would say about that. I don't think the people care. Uh, I think it's a little like what Donald Trump said about what shooting someone on Fifth Avenue. The people who care are his political enemies, Netanyahu's political enemies. I'm not sure the Israeli public cares so much. The, he's their man for the most part, and the polling seems to show that. In terms of the Gaza question, one thing that's different in terms of these different leaders is Lieberman. Because if Lieberman is brought into yet another government, he's going to have to remember, he left the last government right. in part because he wants to finish the job on Hamas. Yeah. He keeps complaining finish the job, and the, the, for bringing him in is always a wild card because Netanyahu hasn't gone far enough, and we're not sure what Gantz would do in the south. We know that his experience is in the north, in Lebanon, but we don't know what he would do with Hamas in Gaza. Right, rightly said, and uh, Lieberman was the defense minister when, when he pulled out and said we need to take a more aggressive stance on, on Hamas in Gaza. All right, Eric, thank you so much. Eric Mandel, Thane Rosenbaum, appreciate it as always. Thank you, Michelle.